Hello YouTube, in this video I am going to share my experience of using iOS 18 on iPhone SE 2 which was launched way back in 2020. So it still got the same A13 chip that went into the iPhone 11 and 11 Pro but with a 3 GB of RAM. So this time all the iOS 17 supported devices get iOS 18 so from the iPhone 10s, which is still rocking a A12 chip also gets iOS 18. So sad that iPhone 10 didn't get it. Okay, so we can expect a minimum of one more year of update for this iPhone SE 2 as well. Well, Apple still sells a third generation of the same device, the iPhone SE third gen, which was launched in 2022 with the same old design. So which dates back to the iPhone 6 days, which was launched way back in like uh, 2014. So who is this phone aimed at? Well, it's for people who are accustomed to the home button UI and isn't willing to learn the new, uh, I mean the simple swipe interface. And also it is for people who need a cheaper secondary device. So let's dive into the video of iPhone SE 2 running iOS 18 beta 2 right now. So we shall see five major things that has changed starting with the home screen and icons customization. On the right hand I have iOS 18 enabled iPhone SE 2 and on the left side it is the SE 2 with iOS 17. So as you can notice the new customization for home screen. So right now we have the icons customization. So you can choose from different options so you can have tinted icons. So you might have seen this with the material UI in Android. So it's something similar to this. So the implementation has gotten better with the beta 2, but still there are few bugs. So also you can increase the size of the icons. So then you don't have the text below the icons and it looks bigger and it's a, a new change. So a new flavor. So you can customize according to your wallpaper colors or according to your taste. So if you want some tinted colors like this, so everything looks uniform and you can customize with your own wallpaper. So you can uh, customize in a multitude of ways, but I like this minimalistic look in dark mode. So right now, and also you can arrange your icon something like this and you can enlarge your uh, widgets and all those customizations are there with iOS 18. Now coming to the next change is control center. So how do you open control center on iPhone SE? It's not like this. So you need to swipe from the bottom and you get the new control center. So it's completely customizable now. So you can add or remove anything so you can resize and you have three pages by default. So in the second page, you can have the music and in the third page, I'll get the Wi-Fi, mobile data and all those things. So as you can notice, so it's completely customizable. So once you click on this plus icon, so you can move around the icons anywhere and you can add it, you can resize something. So let me resize this. So it's as simple as that. And according to your personal needs, so there are a multitude of uh, customizations and toggles which you can enable from here. So it is really a new thing which we are getting in iOS. So again, something which Android had for some time, but yeah, the implementation is really good and you have different pages where you can customize the things. We also get a power off switch on top. So right over there, which was not there in the previous version. Coming to number three, lock and hide apps. So it requires touch ID to lock the application and in newer phones, it would require face ID. So once it is locked, so you would require touch ID to authenticate the application. So when I click on it, it will ask for touch ID. And if I do that, I'll get access to that application. And if you want to hide it, it's again the same way. So once the app is hidden, so you'll get this message over here. So I'll click on OK. And once it is done, the app is hidden and you cannot search it anywhere. So even in the spotlight search, if you try to search for that application, so you won't be able to find that application. So it is very handy like if you're giving it to someone like if you want to share some photos and if you're sharing your phone so they cannot access your uh, apps which you don't intend to access. So it's available here in the app drawer section and with touch ID or face ID you can access the application. Number four is app improvements. So first one in that is photos application. So as you notice the new photos application it has some uh, really new features so with, wherein with ai it classifies your photos into different 
uh, slideshows and so on but uh, i mean like aesthetically i like the previous ios 17 one so the preview window is much larger and i can enjoy the photo in a complete uh, screen and there are like uh, for editing there are some new features but again the preview mode uh, the photo has been shrunken down so even in landscape as you can notice the ios 17 you can see the complete image compared to the smaller image in the ios 18 device so this is one feature which i don't like the second is messaging app so you can finally react with your own emotions or emojis right there also now you can schedule a message so if you click on send later and you can set a timer so you can wish your friend happy birthday at 12 am exactly so something like this and also there is an option to stylize the text or particular words so you can choose from a variety of things so uh, it can have a very good effect so something like this apart from this there is minor improvements in the settings app so you have a separate app section where you can scroll through the applications and there is a new passwords app so it's moved from the settings and there are minor improvements to safari and maps and uh, different applications which we can see in the ipad os 18 video which is coming pretty soon and there is also the accessibility improvement so this is the vehicle motion cues so which will greatly help in reducing the motion sickness so when you are traveling in car or bus or something like that and now there is one more thing that is iphone mirroring on your mac so your mac has to be updated to the latest mac os sequoia and if you are on ios 18 so all the devices it supports the mirroring functionality apart from the eu of course so it's really fluid and you can scroll through any application so if you want to uh, access your social media applications if you are working or in school so you can do that obviously please don't do that now let's see some real world performance so left side is ios 17 and right side ios 18 the photos app it took longer to open now with utip application so it's faster on ios 18 iphone se2 now next application let's open calculator okay so uh, there is some new features with calculator so let's try it once again so let me try to close the calculator and try to open it once again let's be fair so yeah it opened it up at same time now the home application again it's faster in ios 17 maybe it's not yet optimized for ios 18 so now the google maps again it was faster on uh, ios 17 mobile and let's try to open some different application right now let me try the contacts so it was more or less the same so the lightweight application so there is no change but the notes application again uh, slightly faster on the older device or the older os so now the another third party application again it was faster with the ios 17 then the ios 18 so most of the applications it's not yet optimized and but the overall smoothness is there so there is no lag or something like that so let's try out some games so let me see if i have games on the ios 17 device yeah so we have the same games so let's try the subway surfers so both open set almost the same time okay again there is a lead in ios 17 device and i was 18 caught it up so let's check this out and let's try to play and if we see any lag or something like that again these are like a basic games so there shouldn't be any lag or something like that and they are pretty f uh, fluid so there is no issues on that so again like iphone se2 it's able to handle the ios 18 without breaking any sweat but again there should be some optimizations again this is the second beta so in the coming releases it should be much more optimized especially with the uh, third party applications and camera app so again uh, the overall fluidness so everything is there so there is no issues on the fluidity but yeah some optimizations would really help so just to verify this i just ran geekpen 6 on both the devices and the cpu test can clearly see the difference here so on the ios 17 device it scores a bit higher than compared to the newer ios 18 device it's not yet well optimized now i have the result with the second beta also which i ran in june 26th so as you can notice there is some a good improvement over the previous beta so 
going by this trend so we can uh, believe that by the public release it should be sorted out so the same goes to the gpu test as well so i ran the gpu test in the same geekbench 6 and again uh, the scores you can notice so there is some difference so actually in the gpu department so it's uh, more higher than even ios 17 here so as you can see the results and with the beta 2 it has increased even more so that's a good thing and finally we are into the conclusion where i'll answer your two questions so number one is it worth upgrading the iphone se 2020 to ios 18 the answer is yes especially for the android levels of customization well in a good way though now coming to number two is it worth getting iphone se2 in 2024 for this the answer is no but if you're still using it well you definitely have a reason for it as long as it's serving its intended purpose and battery life is good so you can still continue using it well until the new se4 comes out but it's rumored to have a full screen design with face id and notch so just like the iphone 13 series there won't be any home button anymore and it's expected to be launched in early 2025 so well definitely sometime before the gta 6 hits the market <laughs> so but yeah if you want to upgrade right now in this price range so you can go with the iphone 13 and you won't regret it if you want to go slightly higher budget so well uh, say uh, if you have budget for iphone 15 i would say wait for the iphone 16 the only reason for this is you are getting the ai features also with the next iteration of iphone 16 along with the usb type c upgrade and finally one more one more thing some of you guys might have asked how to install this ios 18 developer beta on your phone so it's quite simple now but first a disclaimer don't install it on your primary device or the device that you use for work or business all you need to do is just go into the settings application on your phone then scroll down to the general and then uh, click on the software update so once if you're into the software update so you get an option called beta updates now so click on that and there you'll have multitude of options so there select ios 18 developer beta so you want the ios 18 one then when you go back boom you get the ios 18 beta option ready there and you can just click on update now and it will update to the latest operating system if you're upgrading to ios 18 so you don't lose any data so all your data all your applications so everything it will be uh, same so there might be some issues with some banking applications but yeah the uh, users who are using with the ios 18 beta hasn't reported any issue but again use it with a word of caution and again the thing is like if you want to downgrade to ios 17 so it's not quite simple so you'll have to restore your phone so you lose all your data unless you have backed it up be aware of that that's all i had in this video thank you for watching and subscribe for more videos like this peace